Now, how are you dealing with the food issue? Because the three issues I wanted to talk about today was obviously the banking system, which we've talked about. And Stephen, again, excellent, um, you know, you know, in-depth sort of analysis on that. I'm sure you could talk for hours and there's huge amounts of structure on that. And, and we'll, it'll be mentioned again um, in this interview. But let's talk about the second one, which is now the food aspect and, and, and how are we looking at feeding the people? Because when I walk down Johannesburg streets and suburban streets and in all the different cities, I don't see a huge amount of food growing which I don't understand because if we were to replace a lot of this with food, there would be a huge – I mean, why are we not growing our own food? What's, what's, what's your Ubuntu party's philosophy with regard to food and how are you practically going to implement this, this notion of feeding the people? Forgive my simplicity once again, but nobody's growing food because they have to go to jobs to earn money to buy food. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't have to do that. And people all grew something in their gardens. We all have that ability to do, to, to grow something. There'd be such an abundance of food, medicine, whatever we need, if we, we spent a couple of hours a day just focusing on feeding ourselves, you know, taking that responsibility and planting seeds in the ground. It's so ridiculously easy to do. You know, we've been brainwashed into thinking that growing food is a specialized science. It's not. Everybody can do that, and we, everybody should be doing that. It's really that simple. That's a very good point. We you don't make have it. to feed the people. The people can feed themselves. We can decentralize food production to each community, and depending on what each community can grow, we can always um, exchange various types of food, depending on, on climate or whatever, but we, you know, what are we doing? What are we doing with our time? If we grew food, we wouldn't have to feed the people. We'd well, be feeding ourselves. I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. And it, it is something that's happening um, around the world as more and more food gardens start to be set up um, and the decentralization it's of food begins to happen, um, which is just, uh, it's just, it's something that is, for me is a no brainer, like you said. And you said something very beautiful. You talked about food becoming this complicated science. I mean, agricultural degrees are, exactly. take years to study what? How to use a combine harvester most effectively? What kind of uh, pesticides to use in certain mm -hmm. climate conditions? What kind of genetically modified organisms will work well? And I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Why aren't we just planting? And, um, and I'd like to, to ask Sid this now. Sid, Sid's been a bit quiet. Uh, uh, he hasn't had, really had much chance to speak, so I'd like to give him that chance now. Now, I've seen Sid, I've seen you build food forests and food gardens, and you've, you've had a lot of experience in permaculture. Tell me practically, is this decentralization of food gardens a myth, a crazy idea, or can it happen? And if so, how w would it happen? And how long would it take to happen if the Ubuntu party was given the chance to make it happen? No, well, firstly, yes, Scotty, it can happen. But I think we also need to understand that currently we have millions or billions of people in cities. And what has been created is the illusion and the lie that the world is overpopulated. What these corporations effectively have done is they've driven people into cities, um, living, living in little tin shacks, and they've given that, they've created that illusion that there are too many people in the world. But when you go and do, math, when you go and do the maps, and you work out that uh, we've got 7.2 billion people in the world today, if you had to give every man, woman, and child um, two soccer fields on which to live, it could take up less than 10% of the world's land mass. Not only that, the current agricultural land or, la or, the, or the land that can yield agriculture currently on Earth is about 30%. So there's more than enough land for that. And if you have smaller communities growing food, they can grow food for people in the cities. Growing food is not, mm -hmm. that, uh, is not, is not rocket science. Well, we've seen this in Russia with the Dutchniks, um, and uh, you know some people here. Here, people go to Plet or, or to various, you know, nice little holiday places on the on the south coast or wherever they go. Uh, but in Russia, a lot of people go to their little outside city little farms called Dutchniks, where they actually produce their own food. Do you see something like that happening, Sid? Um, I mean, and again, I want to go back to the practicalities. I mean, is it possible for a family? Or a small community to learn how to grow their food quickly and to start growing and become food 
sufficient quickly? Is it physically possible? Oh, yes, it is physically possible. You could do that within uh, within the space of two months, provided they should, they are given the land. Remember, a lot of corp- a lot of the land falls under corporate control nowadays, corporate and government. Even in South Africa, about forty five percent of the land is controlled by corporations and government, um, not by not by private individuals. And a lot of that land is more than more than um, need- we have enough land just under government hands at the moment to give people to grow food. And in your little Ubuntu villages and so on as well, you know, one third of the food will go to the village and the other two thirds can be uh, produced for bigger cities. Not everybody wants to live in a small village. People like food. Some people like the cities and uh, they can then trade for other um, services around them, yeah. Do they, do you, would you, the, the type of techniques that they would have to learn, would this involve uh, fertilizers? I mean, to what degree do you believe that this is completely organic and natural versus, um, you know, more kind of monoculture focusing? I mean, how, how do you see no, that happening? Well, is again, it a combination? No, we, or don't, is it a... we don't, no, we can't, we, we shouldn't go into monoculture. Monoculture is destroying the, the topsoil on the, of the land but monoculture the today, yeah. growing the same thing over growing and over the again same, same thing over and over again or growing huge tracts of land with one particular crop you want to actually mix your crops and you want to use organic farming methods it has also been shown that by using things like biodynamic uh, farming as well as mixed crops and crop rotation you can restore the topsoil of the land in a particular area Within a, spe- within, a, within a period of eight years, you can fully restore the topsoil. Um, we've even tried that out in uh, places like KwaZulu-Natal, where we have used uh, biodynamic farming methods. And our first yield, we had a 10% yield. The second, the second time round, we had about an 80% yield. Bumper harvest, yeah. That's yeah. right. So, yeah, we've actually tested that and proven that it can work.